documenting the crime scene. All right, so when documenting a crime scene, we could do it by note-taking, photographing, and sketching. Documentation is vital throughout an investigation. Most people who go into law enforcement are amazed at the amount of paperwork and writing that is required. In as much as 70% of an investigator's job is consumed by these functions. In addition, photography plays an important role in documenting evidence and presenting cases in court. Okay. And also, some larger departments have a photographic unit. Other departments rely on their investigators to perform this function. And often, both photographs and sketches must accompany written notes to provide a clear picture of the crime scene. In note-taking, it's not unique to the police profession. News reporters take notes to prepare stories, physicians or doctors record information furnished by patients to follow the progress of the case or the illness. Lawyers and judges take notes to assist in interviewing witnesses and making decisions. And of course, students take notes in class and as they read. Quite simply, notes are brief records of what is seen or heard. The note-taking and report writing are often regarded as unpleasant and boring tasks. Yet, no duty is more important, as many officers have found, when they did not take notes or took incomplete notes. So, detailed notes can make or break a case. Inaccurate notes aid later recall and are used for preparing sketches and reports. Notes are also important throughout an entire investigation. So when do we start taking notes? We should start taking notes as soon as possible after receiving a call to correspond and continue recording information as it is received throughout the investigation. There were times where it is physically impossible to take notes immediately for example, while you are driving in a car or in a motorcycle or you are in a complete darkness and you cannot see what you're going to write. At other times, taking notes immediately could hinder obtaining information if it intimidates a witness or suspect. So whether to take out a notebook immediately in the presence of a person being questioned is a matter of personal insight and experience. Okay, so what do we write on our notes? We should enter general information first, the time and date of the call, the location, the officer assigned, and arrival at the scene. So, police departments using centrally dispatched message centers may automatically record date, time, and case numbers. And even if this is done, make written notes of this initial information because recorded tapes may not be kept for extended periods or may be unusable. So the tapes and notes corroborate each other. This, by the way, is known as the 5 W's and 1 H of criminal investigation. So first question, what offense has been committed? Second, where was the offense committed? Third, who committed the crime? Fourth, when was the offense committed? And fifth, why was the offense committed? And last but not the least, how was the offense committed? So since we're already familiar with the five W's in one H, how about we think of other questions? That starts with five W's in one H. Okay. And we should also describe the physical scene, including the general weather and lighting conditions. Witnesses may testify to observations that would have been impossible given the existing weather or lighting. So we should not also rely on the witnesses or suspects' testimonies all the time because they may be um, untruthful at times. Okay, 
So accurate notes in such conditions will refute false or incorrect testimony. We should also record everything we observe in the overall scene. All the services rendered, including first aid, description of the injured, location of wounds, who transported the victim, and how. We should also record the complete and accurate information regarding all photographs taken at the scene. Okay. And as the search is conducted, record the location and description of evidence and its preservation. Okay. Record information to identify the type of crime and what was said and by whom. You should also include the name, address, and phone number of every person present at the scene and all witnesses. And more importantly, we should write or print legibly, especially when recording names, addresses, telephone numbers, license numbers, distances, and other specific facts. Okay? And if you make an error, cross it out, make the correction, and initial it. Do not erase, whether intentional or accidental, erasures erase credibility questions. Okay? Another tip for note-taking, if you have a tape recorder or let's say a phone, you can use it to record your interviews. So when using a tape recorder, it has no danger of misinterpreting, slanting, or misquoting. But it can malfunction and fail to record valuable information. Weak batteries or background noise can also distort the information recorded. And it's also time-consuming, expensive, and subject to error. And check the recorder before using it. Record the appropriate heading before beginning the questioning. And always play the tape back to ensure that the information is recorded satisfactorily. And last but not the least, supplement the tape with notes of the key points. So you should not rely alone on the tape recorder, but at the same time, you also need to take notes on a piece of paper. And one more thing before I end the discussion. Oftentimes, police officers or civilians use their phones to record videos or videotape a crime scene or interrogations. Videotape is particularly impressive in court. There are some precautions to take when recording a suspect's confession on either um, audio or videotape. The first is to recite the Miranda warning, of course, to the suspect on the tape and to ask if he understands. Next is to ask him if he waives his right to remain silent and to record his answer. Finally, it's necessary to advise him that the session is being recorded and to ask him if he consents to that. Once all of these essence are on tape, the suspect may proceed with his confession. So probably the most important reason for videotaping a confession is to counter a defense attorney's repudiation of the suspect's confession or accusation of a forced confession because a videotape can show that the suspect spoke freely without having his arm twisted and it forestalls any false accusations.